Hello, welcome to a new video. We are going to prepare some healthy snacks today. In the meantime, we are planning to talk about healthy eating, healthy lifestyle for musicians and yeah. We are uh, preparing now guacamole and um, hummus with roasted paprika. Can't wait. Um, both of them we love. Yes, yeah, since when actually has it become kind of important for us? to eat healthier than before. Because I remember before we were eating like chips and beer in the evening as, as a dinner <laughs> and like eating everyday pasta. Yeah, I mean, um, it's somehow changed probably also during the pandemic. Yeah, but also it has also become, I think, by age one feels like when one has a bad or as an unhealthy, let's say, lifestyle where one, I don't know, drinks almost every day or eats a lot of carbohydrates and one feels just really Tired. I just bit a nice You want to say I'm not that young anymore? No. So it's 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 the same with me. No one is as young as they have been like <laughs> eight years ago. So. I also, when I saw like uh, other musicians taking care of their health or what they're eating more, it also became kind of an awareness for me also. And they're really very rare musicians who take care of their health really well. Don't you think? Yeah, not so many. Yeah, I mean, if, if you look at the sportsmen then, or sportswomen, it's really an issue, you know? It's because they work with their body a lot. They're extremely disciplined about when they go to bed, what they eat, when they eat what, and it's all planned. It's also because, you know, they have to perform entirely with their body, so a little amount of alcohol can make a difference in the end. Yes, they, but we are also using our body like, yeah. we are also performing with our body and mind. Alcohol actually affects both of them. We have also to be more creative probably. Yes. For that it's sometimes you don't need 100% of your power and your awareness. Can you do this with the großen Messer? We have a creative job let's say, you know, we're artists. And you cannot put artists in a cage, kind of, in a cage of discipline. I think it would really kill, at some point, this creativity or this inspiration. We have to use our imagination and our soul and heart so much, I think, much more than an athlete. Yeah, and probably. Yes, so, I don't know, if to support like a 100% healthy lifestyle, or have really a lot of exceptions. Let's say 85. 85% healthy <laughs> and 15, come on. And in the evening we make exceptions. <laughs> oh, okay, you mean 85% of the day we can live healthy and... <laughs> yes, we also feel now that, you know, sleep deprivation is, is not a nice thing. Yes. And uh, it really <laughs> affects our fitness and we really know that we have to be careful. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, for those who don't know, we have a daughter of almost two years old. <laughs> she actually sleeps really okay. But she has her ups and downs, like we all do. What's the plan with these onions? Should I cut them in small pieces or...? Yeah, really small pieces. Really small. Okay, so we agree on we need a healthy lifestyle, healthy eating, um, good sleep, but definitely not so strict like yeah. an athlete. I think we kind of um, really need to pay attention to our body because obviously what we are doing is not really healthy. Yeah, because or it can become unhealthy. You know, you, I'm, I was sitting eight hours a day at the piano when I was 20 and I thought I really needed it. Guess what? I didn't need it. But at that time I thought so and nobody told me and then I really got you know, some kind of pain in my uh, lower arms. Yeah, I really had to struggle for, for months and over a year to get back on my feet or on my arms. Um, yeah, it was a really hard time for me. 
yeah, it would have been really nice to to know what to do. Being in sports and having an injury is, you know, you have great doctors that can help you. Yes. And um, I think this has al also changed now in the music world. You can really choose that path of studying about injuries for musicians or how to get better and everything, which I find amazing, actually, because um, it happens really very often and it was really about time. And it happened to me also. I was like 14. I was preparing uh, for Jürgen Mottestiert competition for the first time. I was chosen for the German part of it. Mm. It was a very important thing for me, for my teacher and everyone. And it was a lot of stress. Of course, practicing a lot, like without really knowing kind of what you're doing. You know, you're not practicing eight hours a day only for the music. You're really practicing your technical things and everything. And one is mostly in these times really stressed. I think it has really a lot to do, these sure. injuries with stress, because the nerves are getting then more tense and yeah. yeah. I was also stressed. I think I thought that I had to, you know, do so many things at the same time and do competitions and prepare yeah. myself. And um, I was kind of in a hurry. And now, you know, when I think about it, it's so ridiculous because when you're just at the beginning of your 20s, you have a lot of time. Um, but in your head, something tells you that you don't have time and you have to be fast, you have to be quick. And I think this is something that we should know. Somebody should tell us that, that we actually have time. We have our whole life if we want to be musicians. That's the whole thing. No one tells you because everyone yeah. tells you, you have to hurry up. You're getting older and then this path, it's full of younger musicians. And actually the world gives you this image of you don't have time. It's not having something you make up on your own. Yeah. This competition and this whole stress and you know, getting tendonitis, it's like somehow it's the nightmare of a lot of musicians and somehow it's like what happens. So how did you get over it actually? Well, um, I tried so many things. I went to so many doctors and actually in the end what helped me the most was going to a gym and really starting to work out. I mean, not that you can see it now, but uh, <laughs> at that time I was doing it quite properly and uh, it so helped me once you have this kind of pain feeling in your brain that says something is hurting, then it never stops. So you have to somehow get over this mm -hmm. cycle. And, you know, going to the gym really helped me a lot. It was an awful experience, but at the other hand, I wouldn't want to miss it somehow. I mean, it, I know it sounds cheesy, but somehow it's true because since then I've really learned to listen to my body. So when my body tells me, you know, something's wrong, something doesn't feel right, then I immediately stop and I do something else. You know, I go out or I go for a walk and I just stop practicing as long as I don't feel comfortable. That's something that I learned and it helps me a lot because it also gives me this freedom to say, OK, now my body tells me I'm tired, so let's cut it. I didn't want to stop you there, but as you were saying, you wouldn't want to miss it. And it sounds cheesy, but exactly the same with me. I mean, I was 14 and I went to doctors and they gave me injections, like totally the wrong kind of way to go. At some point I found someone who told me just, you just have to relax. You just have to not practice. Let your hand relax for another two months. Don't practice. And that was so great. And I actually had a part uh, in the dancing club in the German high school and we performed at the end and I could go every weekend to the dancing lessons. I had so enjoyed it and I think if I had to practice I would never have had that experience. Sometimes when I shout at these young musicians, you know, say like, just live because you're not going to get this inspiration you need to make music you won't get it through practicing yeah. in a room all by yourself, you know, trying to get those pieces and everything. The music you only understand through what you live and what you experience, your mind and everything. I don't know. Don't yeah. you think our world is really stiff? Although we are doing something so creative, so much greater than us. I think it should be really important to, to remind younger people of how important it is to, to take time and to relax and to step back a little bit. Şimdi? Um, ne yapıyoruz? Şimdi I correct what you did. Hmm. <gülüyor> Biraz maydanoz alıyorum buradan. Hmm. 
Okay, so now it's the time for our olive oil. From our friends. From our friends, yes. In Vin Vino Wein. We put it generously, of course. Hmm. Mm. So we were talking a lot about our injuries. I really think it helps a lot if you just listen to your body. I think we musicians are brought up by believing that everything is, you know, can be determined with your brain and that your body is just, you know, doing what you say. But I think it's good to think the other way around and to know that without your body it's worthless what you think or you want to do. So, yeah, I think it's all about balance, no? So now we're getting to the hummus. Delights of the Turkish cuisine. Well, this is actually kind of Arabic cuisine. Yeah. Turkey is swallowing all the all good cultures. things of, of so many cultures. We need garlic. Oh yeah, we need garlic. Oh, we needed garlic also for guacamole. We, have we garlic. forgot garlic again. Damn my Turkish DNA. <laughs> Here we go. We need to press that for guacamole. Uh, one is enough, it's a huge one. And this is some French garlic, by the way. Oh, I love how everything comes together in the kitchen. All the cultures, like when we're playing music and reading literature, you know? You put something from yourself, you put something from South America, guacamole, right? And hummus, some Arabic cuisine. So some tahin, which is also a huge part of Turkish Arabic cuisine. Sesame paste. Um, Yay. Which is done so fast. So this is the hummus. We just put it in everything and hop. Goodbye. Bye bye. So here we go. Looks delicious. Here we go. Mm. <laughs> Just do it. Mm, one of you. Mm. Okay, so now it's the famous dill that I'm collecting. So what's called in Turkish? Dereotu. <laughs> evet. It's growing like hell. Mm. So that's the way you do it. You know, this healthy lifestyle is, I think, just kind of a discipline. It's a discipline where you need to like bring yourself to because it feels good afterwards. But I think as musicians, we really, really shouldn't lose this spontaneous lust of something, you know? If, if you feel like, I don't know, eating chips today, I think you should do that. Are you feeling that? <laughs> Not today, because we have all this great stuff. I, I love these things, but I just think the worst thing what one can do to kill one's soul is to put pressure on it. It's exactly the same while practicing, you really kill the joy to make music if one puts so much pressure. It's exactly the same with this lifestyle. As one says, a little party never killed nobody. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's the spirit. I mean, that's the spirit I would love my child also to follow. So I think that's the spirit we'll also live on. Yeah. And I like it. <laughs> <laughs> So we talked today actually about quite uh, intense stuff we have gone through while we were younger, let's say. Um, it sounded like it wasn't intense, but oh, it, it was, yes, it was intense. very intense because now we look back and everything is fine. But of course, back then it was uh, connected with a lot of fear for our future, uh, for our mm -hmm. way to go. And um, yeah, now with that it worked, we're happy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we don't know what garlic is in music, but we actually don't even think it's important. We enjoyed really a lot uh, preparing this food and um, uh, talking about some not very nice times in uh, our past. And if you have some questions about all these things, you can, of course, leave it in the comments and we can answer them individually or um, 
of course talk about it in a live session if you like and yes see you in the next video bye bye